sort of semi-finished episodes and come in and I'm doing that and you know it's it's a nice feeling I mean I, I feel I feel involved as involved as an author can be I mean I've had things where you know I just sort of pushed the movie the book into a slot and waited uh, for the hunger which turned out to be really close to my novel uh, I wasn't even invited to the press screening or the premiere or anything of the hunger. Of the hunger. I was just left alone in a theater in uh, down, downtown, alone to watch the movie myself with my wife, and nobody came to say, "Do you like it or not?" or anything. When it was over, the lights sort of went up, and we left. And I thought it was a darn good movie too. I, I guess he was afraid I wouldn't like it or something. But, what are your memories of Tony? Uh, Thank you so much. Sad. Uh, he was a wonderful guy, and he was, yeah, I would never have believed what happened. <laughs> I, but I hadn't known him in years. I mean, obviously his life changed, and uh, uh, it was his first feature. And it was, uh, you know, he'd come from TV and from, uh, and from music videos. I thought he was very brilliant and very talented, and Catherine Deneuve really loved it. She thought he was terrific. And... Uh, so it worked, you know, but uh, it just so, I just wonder, I often wonder what happens to people in their lives and what the mysteries are within us and, you know, and then suddenly we find a person makes a decision like that and we know only that there was a mystery. Yeah, it's the next uh, issue, the next volume in the book series is called Alien Hunters, The White House and it's going to come out in April uh, of 2016. And I, I know a lot of people in politics, and I actually based the president in it on a guy I know. He's not president of the United States, but I sent him a manuscript, and he said, my God, how did you find all this stuff about us out? And I said, ah, oh, you, you know, your friends gossip a lot. And I'll never say who he is, he'd have me shot. <laughs> It, it should be a good, it should be a lot of fun. It, it's an exciting book. And I love my, the character Flynn Carroll has worked for me. I really, you know, I really feel a, a kinship with him. And it's important if you're going to write fiction that your characters be within you, but also not under your control. Because if they're under your control, they're never really alive. And he definitely is not under my control, that's for sure. Catch up to it. Uh, that could, they'll, they'll, they'll inevitably be cross pollinization. I hope it's good. I mean, you know, frankly, it could help the TV series could help the book series a lot. They have me writing a short story for the tie-in edition of the first volume, which of of the Alien Hunger series, which is going to come out with the whenever the uh, series is is goes on sci-fi and so I'm sort of doing that right now and it's, it's interesting it it goes way back to the beginning of Flynn's career as a per you know it, he's a teenager in this and it shows how he he became entangled in this before he even knew anything about what might happen in the future is there anything in particular you're worried about how it's going to be adapted whether it's you know because of special effects budget or just in general I'll listen but I've seen it's fabulous I haven't seen anything. It doesn't. I don't think that I, they must have. A, I don't know anything about the budgets. You know, it's a, something that I, you'd have to ask Gail about that. But uh, to my eye, the effects look really top drawer. I mean, I, so what I'm seeing is a very high quality production, and that's not always the case. I mean, you know, you can have series with really, really low rent production values. Movie suit for that matter. I mean, look at Communion. I don't know if you ever, you ever saw that. It was horrible. A disaster. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, you get what you you get what you get once you're in the right. And I was supposedly the author of the screenplay of Communion. But as far as I can tell, they took my screenplay, page through it, <laughs> tossed it over their shoulders, and made another movie. I was wondering, particularly about Communion, is that the singular event that changed your life? Do you remember before and then after? It's like a sort of central event in my life, and the thing that's strange, it was so annoying about it all, was I wrote a book about my perceptions. I didn't write a book about experiences. There's a huge difference between those things, but I, I, I was warned by a friend who read it 
before it was published, and he said, you know, people are going to take this as claims of alien contact. And I said, but it's obviously that's not what it is. It says in the front of the book, the human mind winks back from the dark. Okay, what does that mean? It means that I don't know what happened is what it means. And I spent years trying to kind of get work through that in the media and finally just retreated. I quit. I haven't been out in public in years because of that. Because I just don't know what happened. Didn't the publisher more or less capitalize on that oh, misconception God. too? They sure <laughs> did. They they ran with it. I never expected that to happen. They were so, yes, we understand perfectly. Uh, we're, it's going to be treated with absolute respect. And aliens whomped one of him. I mean, you know, that's what was horrifying. What a, what a strange experience. The whole thing, in many ways, the strangest part of it was what happened after the book was published, not what happened to me that caused me to write the book, which I don't know the answer to. So. Was your relationship with Christopher Walken uh, a encouraging one? Or was it also no, not really. Experience? I mean, I, we, we went out drinking a couple of times, as I recall. And brilliant actor, but he was also some kind of a jerk, I thought. We didn't really hit it off. We haven't talked since the movie. Is there anything in, in life that has caused you to revisit that time? Well, the thing was that it, it didn't actually end. It went on for years. And I've written a, few, a, a couple of books trying to cope with it. And I have a nonfiction book coming out in uh, February called Supernatural, which is a completely re-envisioning of the whole thing, written with a... Uh, historian of religion called Jeff Kripa, uh, who is a, a professor of religion at Rice University. That's being brought out by Tarcher Penguin, and I'm hoping it'll sort of re-dimensionalize the whole thing, because we don't have any idea if there are aliens here but any at all, and yet the public just assumes it's true. But it, what if it's something else? Then we're, you know, I'm sorry, when you say what if it's something else, what do you mean? Exactly? I don't know. I wish I could tell you. <laughs> uh, but if, if it's something else that we don't understand or haven't even articulated yet. Because it, uh, what happened to me was an incredible ongoing experience that lasted about 10 years, during which time we got hundreds of thousands of letters from people who had had similarly weird, but fundamentally sort of sometimes quite different things happen. And, you know, my wife read all these letters. She was indefatigable, and, 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 and she finally said, you know, Whitley, this has got something to do with the dead, because people would see these aliens, and they'd see the ghosts and other things along with them. It was just all a very weird, supernatural thing that made me decide we actually don't know what this is yet. We think we do. We think we know a lot more. Neuroscientists think they know a lot more about the, what the mind is and the way it works than, than, than we actually do. I'm not so sure that it's all inside. I think things can come out of our mind into the world around us every once in a while, frankly. I mean, that would explain the fact that paranormal phenomena have been with us for thousands of years. And we've never, we never take step back and say, what is this? We always say, oh, someone says, I saw a ghost. And then the next guy says, well, that's impossible. And then someone says, oh, I believe you. But there's another level. We could step back from that and say, what actually happened to this person's mind and brain? Is that the basis of the book, Supernatural? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's where we're going with it. Is it, is it more or less charted into different phenomena? And then, or is it no, it takes, it takes the whole... The survey course, as well. it were? It takes the whole phenomenon as a single thing, that all of these <laughs> enigmatic, <laughs> unknown experiences are somehow related. They're all being generated in some way that we don't understand. Maybe by the mind and maybe by some something outside of us that we've never really been able to pin down. But with the history of religion and, 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 and with the, our capabilities in science now, we probably can take a much broader look at the paranormal. The book's subtitle is A New Vision of the Unexplained. So does Alien Hunters, are you, are you in this respect, lending the series credibility, or are you doing this as a lark? No, I like, no, it's not a lark at all. I, I 
am a, basically a fiction writer. If I'm not writing fiction, I'm not really very happy. <laughs> and uh, I have gotten very interested in this character in Flynn Carroll because he embodies the kind of ambiguities I've been talking about with regard to supernatural. I mean, he's a character that's living in the world of supernatural, as it were. And I definitely want to keep writing about him. I want to explore him a lot more than I have. So. Any more? One more question?